you know what time it is. Football season, Q4. Time to close out another year of growth and prep for the next year of revenue. To bring in more businesses Q4 and beyond, you need HubSpot Sales Hub. With a smart prospecting workspace, deal management suite, and AI-powered apps, you can take total control of your operation to generate more leads and land more sales. And when you pair a sales hub with other hubs in HubSpot Smart CRM, your team will be on the same page across the entire customer journey. Leads won't slip through the cracks, and data is connected across marketing, sales, and operations, so you can better measure your impact on the bottom line. Stop sticking to the same old strategies and start closing more deals, because the best time to score is Q4. Make the switch to HubSpot Sales Hub at HubSpot.com slash sales. Good morning, everyone. It's Wednesday, October 25th. I'm Mark Dent here with Rob Litterst, and this is The Hustle Daily Show. Do you know where your friends are right now? If you have any kids, do you know where they are? Well, if you're a millennial or a Gen Xer, we're guessing that the answer is probably a hard no. But Gen Zers, on the other hand, many of them are totally cool with sharing their location at all times with their friends and even with their parents. And this unusual preference could actually make for a really interesting industry. We're going to have a lot more on that in a moment, but first, let's talk about everything else that's happening in the world of business and tech. All right, starting off, Spotify said that it was pleasantly surprised to announce its first quarterly profit since 2021. The Swedish audio streaming giant made $68.9 million last quarter, showing that anything is possible when you raise your prices, slice your staff, and cut your marketing budget. Yeah, I found this really funny, especially kind of the optics from Daniel Eck. I think he's the one Mm -hmm. who said our results surprised even us. Just, you know, little old us, not really trying to make a buck. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I thought it was kind of interesting framing for a company that has kind of notoriously made it really hard for artists to make money from their music. Yeah, and it's just been such a retrenchment for Spotify in, in so many ways. They've backed out of a lot of their podcasting emphases that they thought would be a lot more profitable for them because they don't have to pay out royalties to totally. people who do podcasts, but it, it hasn't really worked out for them. So it, it is a very unusual way of becoming profitable, to say the least. Totally. All right, let's move on to Google, which is temporarily disabling live traffic data in Israel and Gaza for its Google Maps and Waze apps amid the ongoing conflict. The company took similar action during Ukraine's war with Russia last year. Amazon is working to add veterinary telehealth to its offerings. Why? It's trying to keep up with Walmart Plus. Walmart Plus is currently offering free access to pet telehealth provider POP. That's P-A-W-P, by the way. All right, let's talk about Elon Musk. We kind of always have to do that, eh? The Boring Company, which is Musk's tunneling startup, now has a $7 billion plus implied valuation. If you're wondering how a company that you're probably not aware of anything that it's done is now worth $7 billion, you're not alone. The Boring Company immediately got slammed by the news website The Information, which called the number impressive, quote, considering the company has yet demonstrated it has much of a business. Finally, somebody who does have quite a lot of a business, regardless of what you think about her. Kim Kardashian is getting into the men's underwear space. Her brand, Skims, is releasing new products that include briefs, undershirts, boxers, and leggings. This is a move that launches Kardashian into a $5.7 billion market. Rob, I think you were telling me that this stuff is called shapewear. That's exactly right. (laughs) Does it entice you? It really, truly doesn't. I would need to really kind of understand the products a little bit more, but I'm kind of into the whole dad bod thing, moving even further into that. So shapewear doesn't really appeal to me. (laughs) That being said, Kim Kardashian has a massive, massive audience, many of which are men. And I'm sure many of them will buy this stuff. I would not be surprised if we see the numbers from her men's shapewear business in the coming months and we're just flabbergasted. I kind of agree. I I feel like Kim Kardashian, she tends to win. Yep. The thing about Kim Kardashian that I do really like is I think she's kind of in on the joke. Mm -hmm. She doesn't seem to take herself too seriously, or at least like that's kind of like her publicly facing persona. Like she gets it. She understands all of the different thoughts about her and different opinions on her. And she plays the game. Yeah. All right. So back in like the 1960s, all the way through the 1980s, there was like a very familiar way that newscasters would sign on when they started the 10 o'clock news. They would ask the audience, 
do you know where your children are? And it just sort of became this habit and cultural phenomenon of sorts that has long ago faded out. But, you know, I feel like it's coming back into vogue now among people who are under the age of give or take 25. They are really into sharing their location. And we're not just talking about posting like an Instagram once a day or something like that. We are talking about really sharing their location. Yeah, this is really, really interesting to me. So I have a cousin who is Gen Z. Mm -hmm. She's about 15 years younger than me. We're millennials, by the way. Let's. uh, I'm a millennial, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm a deep millennial. I was over at my aunt and uncle's house and my aunt was just sitting there just watching Uber. And I was like, what is she doing? And she was watching this car and like watching where it was going. And I was <laughs> oh, like, no. are you ordering an Uber? Like we're about to eat dinner. And she's just oh, like, boy. no, I'm watching Andy. So she's like watching her daughter figuring out like where her Uber is going and just kind of tracking her. And I was like, huh, that's interesting. And it just struck me like that's not something that my mom could ever do when I was younger. I would just kind of leave and go hang out at friends' houses, go to the mall, whatever. Wow. Did Andy opt in to this tracking? Was it her idea? Do you know? So I don't think she had a choice in the matter at all. I think this was just part of living in the city and having to move around and go to her friends' places somehow. And I feel like that's just kind of the beginning of this trend. I think the more interesting part to your point is that Gen Zers are totally opting into this. And the first time that I really saw this as well was with Andy again, she used that snap map feature. Like her and her friends always know where they are because they use Mm -hmm. Snapchat to text with each other and they have a map feature where they can basically see where they are. And I was just like, that is crazy. It's so interesting to me. And it creates all these dilemmas. It can obviously create crazy FOMO. You know, if all of your friends are together and you're not there, like it creates all of these kind of crazy relationship challenges. Yeah. But it can also create some safety challenges as well if your whereabouts are kind of out in the public sphere. There's maybe two sides to it. If your whereabouts are out there, you know, people know where you are, but they also know where you are. And for young people who are going on dates, who are walking home late at night, it could definitely serve a purpose. And there are obviously a lot of different tech features. You mentioned Snap Map. Apple has always had the Find My iPhone, for which about 50% of Americans have that on their iPhone. There's also a geo-tracking app called Life360 that has 50 million active monthly users. And that's kind of like a family locator type of app. So that's kind of that situation where parents are following their kids. So the craziest thing about this though, Mark, is you don't even need to be sharing your location for people to be able to find out where you are. I don't know if you've ever seen this guy, Jose Monkey. So he uses like these geolocation tools to essentially watch videos of people on social media and immediately figure out where they are geographically. It's literally like the craziest thing I've ever seen. The first time I saw it was this woman who was in the South. I think she was in Georgia or something like that. And he literally tracked her down by like a few landmarks within like a minute. It was freaking crazy. So I think some of the safety worries are a little bit overblown for this location sharing. Because if somebody really wants to find out where you are, they can probably find out in a number of ways anyway. Yeah, no doubt. And one thing, you know, besides safety concerns that may arise, There's the risk of obviously businesses taking advantage of this, Yep. right? I mean, that's an inevitable risk that's going to happen. More things being tailored to us based on locations is going to happen for sure. Totally. I think Life360 actually got in some hot water because they were selling data. And that is one of those things where it's just like, if you're going to enable this and you're going to track this data, you have to be safe with it. That's literally like the number one tenet of running a business like this. I think there's a lot of opportunity for businesses. Start thinking about businesses who can send customized promotions to people who are physically nearby. I think there are some apps that already enable this, like some retailers. If you're in the mall, I think they'll already use AR to offer you discount codes to come visit their store. Location tracking can also give businesses valuable info about customer habits, schedules, and needs. So pretty interesting. But obviously, to your point, you got to be smart with the data. You can't be selling that stuff. Yeah, right. Exactly. Well, I absolutely see the positives in Gen Z's desire to have their location shared. It makes a lot of sense, but it's not for me yet. I think most importantly, Gen Zers who are teenagers, they should not share their location with parents. That's where I call a don't do it. Totally. (laughs) My mom even talks about this when her and her siblings were younger. 
They would literally just like go walk around the neighborhood, walk all over town, like do whatever they wanted. My grandpa would whistle when dinner was ready and they would like hear him from like miles away and come frolicking back for dinner. (laughs) I would do the same thing pretty much. Like just go over to friends' houses for dinner. If I was like way late, my mom would call the landline and tell my friend's parents that it was time for me to come home and I would come home. It does just seem like this kind of culture of just constant tracking and needing to be constantly aware of where people are is just kind of seems like it creates more problems than it solves, honestly. Yes, for sure. Well, Rob, I know that you'll always be here with me for the Wednesday podcast. So we got that location part down. Yeah. (laughs) All right. Well, thank you, everyone. That's going to do it for us today. Thanks for listening to the Hustle Daily Show. We're a proud part of the HubSpot Podcast Network. Our editor today is Robert Hartwig and our executive producer is Darren Clark. We have a whole lot more tech and business coverage in our newsletter. So if you're not signed up, please go get signed up at thehustle.co slash email and we'll catch you tomorrow. Hey, I want to tell you about another podcast brought to you by the HubSpot Podcast Network, the audio destination for business professionals. This one is called My First Million, hosted by Sam Parr and Sean Perry. My First Million features famous guests like Alice Hermosi, Sophia Amoruso, and Hassan Minaj sharing their secrets for how they made their first million and how to apply their learnings to capitalize on today's business trends and opportunities. So for example, in a recent episode, Sean discusses how his former intern went from making $30,000 a year to $40,000 in one minute by taking one big bet. And today, he's a 22-year-old millionaire thanks to a couple early investments. Want to know more? You can listen to My First Million wherever you get your podcasts.